idiots. Jerk! Don't. Maybe we can get a counseling something. You just don't get it, do you? I don't want to be your wife anymore. I want to be me for a while. I'm not stopping you from being you. <laughs> yeah. As long as being me means being Mrs. Hank Miller. Not anymore. It'll be a fresh start for the both of us. I don't want a fresh start. Picking her up. Hey! What's wrong with you people? I should have picked her up. Get in. Where are you going? It doesn't matter. Just get in. Well, you're lucky I came along when I did. The storm's getting crazy. So, uh, how long have you been out there? All day. That's terrible. I'm sorry. Um, my name is Melissa. I'm Kayla. You're not from around here, are you? Not really. Running away? So that either means yes or mind your own business. Uh, which is it? I'm just passing through. Well, there's a lot to pass through here. I noticed. Where are you headed? Winnemucca. Where's that? Up north. My boyfriend's a mining engineer on the pay and surprises. Cool. Where are you headed? Winnemucca. <laughs> Good one, Kayla. Huh. Now there's a guy with a sense of humor. What do you say we stop and get you a bite to eat? Let's just keep going if you don't mind. This is just great. I'm afraid you're gonna have to turn back, sir. The uh, road's out until further notice. The detour told me to go this way. It's not like we planned these things. Any idea how long it'll be before they open the road? Well, yeah, not until some bureaucrat of the State Highway Administration keeps it the all clear.
What's the problem, officer? Roads out, sir. It's out? We've got a flash flood warning. It's dangerous at the moment. Okay. Thanks for bringing me out here. It's not my fault. What's going on? That's the guy that almost ran me down. Huh. You know what this means? I've got to go all the way back to the interstate, all the way up to Silverton, back down again, 140 extra miles to get some places just 20 miles from here. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hey, aren't you Crusher Cochetti? If I say yes, will you let me through? Does anyone have a working cell? No. Mine broke when you almost ran me over. That was an accident. <laughs> Sorry about not picking you up, but my wife gets kind of nervous about picking up hitchhikers. Oh, no problem. I had hours before I would have died from exposure. I think they have a phone back at that uh, diner. What diner? Uh, that diner a couple miles back. There hasn't been a building on this road for the last 50 miles. It was called Last Chance Diner. Last Chance Diner, now that's rich. Do you remember seeing the diner? Sorry to contradict, but I do believe that diner's closed. It looked open to me. So there is a diner. There was a diner. Hey, you guys can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna go back and check it out, okay? Let's go. That guy at the diner, Officer Deville, sent you. Hello. Please, have a seat anywhere. The state trooper down the road said you guys were closed. Yeah, he's been trying to keep people away from me for years. It's a personal thing. Would you like some water? Yeah. You got a phone? I'm sorry, all I serve here is water. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> this tastes great. Mm. It's my own recipe. Two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen. <laughs> Your 
phone's dead. Yeah, the storm probably knocked down the phone lines. It's a miracle the electricity's working. Isn't it Crusher? Crusher Crochetti. I thought I recognized you. Can't say I rooted for you, though. I'm, I'm a Rams fan. But I can't lie, I do love your burgers. Here. Good for two Crusher burger meals. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Crochetti. Can we get some menus? Sure, but I'll tell you what, since you'll probably be my only customers tonight, I'll just make whatever you want. I'd prefer a menu. Yes, ma'am. Jesus. Most people pronounce it Jesus. Nice name. Religious. <laughs> doesn't really have anything to do with religion. It was my father's idea. I don't know that I'd want to have the name Jesus. I, I'd be expected to know everything. Try me. Here we go. Ma'am? Would you like a menu? Hank. Oh, sure, thanks. How do you know my name? What? He called me Hank. Well, that's your name, isn't it? Yeah, but how do you know? Just talk. Ladies, what would you like? What would you recommend? Excellent question. You know, I have a special knack for knowing exactly what people want. Of course, what they need is an entirely different matter. <laughs> well, don't people want what they need? Mm, not necessarily. In fact, most of the time, people don't. Your recommendation, then, sir. Okay. I think you would like sirloin tips smothered in gravy on a bed of mashed potatoes with a green salad on the side. Thousand Island dressing. That's what my mother always made me for my birthday. Your mother loves you very much. She did. Um, she died last year. Doesn't mean she stopped loving you. Well, what about me? What do I want? <laughs> you want many things, young lady, all of which you don't necessarily need. But as far as dinner is concerned, I think you'd like a gigantic beef burrito with black beans and rice and sour cream and pico de gallo on the side. Hmm? Huh? <laughs> I thought so. Let me get you some bread. Hey, how much is it going to cost? Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll take care of it. No, no. I don't want to be dependent on anyone anymore. I pay my own way. Okay, okay. But how's this? All special orders are free. My personal gift to you. Well, if it's free, it must not be worth having. I guarantee you, Nick. This is an offer you don't want to pass up. Well, I'd like to ask how you're able to do it, one businessman to another. But I see what you lose in food you save elsewhere, like this newspaper. It's 50 years old. Yeah, it belonged to the previous owner. And you just left it sitting here. It reminds me of the original owner. Stan Kostick was his name. Very sweet guy. He was sitting in your very seat reading the newspaper after the morning rush. Tell me, what's the most popular section of the newspaper? Hank. Uh, sports? The obituaries. Right. The obituaries. He was sitting here reading the obituaries, not knowing that the very next day he would be in the obituaries himself. If only he had known. I don't get it. Maybe he's telling us we're going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. 
Perhaps. You're the one with the decision to make. What will it be, menu or special order? Well, I think I'll take the special order if only to hear what you think that I want. Well, I think you've had enough burgers to last you a lifetime. <laughs> so what do you think about a thick porterhouse steak and a baked potato and some summer squash? And don't forget a nice slice of cherry pie fresh from the windowsill. It's a good choice, Jesus. Only make the steak a little rare. I am here to serve. What would you like? I'll have a chicken Caesar salad and a Diet Coke. No, I'm sorry, all I serve here is water. You don't have Diet Coke? Fine, I'll have water. And I'll have a uh, bacon cheeseburger and Diet Coke. All I serve here is water. Okay, I have water. Would you like fries with your cheeseburger? You know, there's something a little disconcerting about a man named Jesus asking me if I want fries. <laughs> well, it's a simple question, sir. No, thanks. Go ahead. I don't care what you do anymore. Yeah, I'll have french fries. Excellent choice, Hank. Uh, how did you know my name? Well, it's Hank. Isn't it, Catherine? Hey, how did you know our names? I'm Jesus. I know everything. I know all of you. I've known you since before you were born. And I've got a plan for each of you, a, a perfect plan. All you have to do is believe in me. Well, folks, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm due back on planet Earth now. So if you don't mind, we'll be leaving. Hank? Fine. Catherine, wait. Where are you going? I got the keys to the car. Catherine, wait. You can go with me. I've had enough of this freak show myself. It's awfully good of you. You can't leave with my wife. It's obvious she doesn't want to stay with you. Sorry, pal. Enjoy the food. Thanks a lot, Jesus. My wife just left me. She was going to leave you anyway, Hank. Yeah, but... Don't worry. She'll be back. What a bunch of craziness. You got that right. Where am I taking you, by the way? Away from here. Seriously, if the road's closed, I've got to go to Silverton. Silverton's fine. I can take a bus from there. No. I cannot believe this. We have just entered into the Twilight Zone. Who are you really? Who do you say I am, Kayla? Well, you could be Jesus, and I could be Britney Spears. Yeah, aren't you supposed to be in heaven or something? What's it going to take to convince you? How's this? <sighs> Funny. You know, anyone can get a fake ID these days. That's right, Kayla. Even you. How did you know that? 
I'm Jesus. I know everything. Melissa, for example, is heading up to Winnemucca for the weekend to visit her boyfriend, Paul. She thinks he's going to propose to her. Is he? Mm-hmm. Yes! Uh, I wouldn't be so excited if I were you. <sighs> Melissa, do you really want to marry a man who makes you drive 400 miles just to propose to you? You're a woman. You're precious. I've got better for you than that. What about me, Jesus? What do you know about me besides my name? I know your wife no longer wants to be Mrs. Hank Miller. Is that true? It is true. Look, I don't know who you are, but you have no right to interfere in my marriage. I'm not interfering with your marriage, Hank. I can save your marriage. How can you save my marriage? All you have to do is ask me. Jesus. Save my marriage. Save my marriage, please, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Save my marriage. We've got to go back in there. I will walk to Silverton before I go back in there. He may be crazy, but he's probably harmless. Probably. Back so soon? Car didn't start. Aren't you worried about your meeting? No, your franchisees meeting. You've got what, 1,100 restaurants now? Be more like 3,000 by the end of next year. It's impressive. Nick. I can offer you greater riches. Riches that can never be lost or stolen or, or sunk by the stock market. That's real good, Jesus. Hank, please. I meant what I said. As if somebody else. Don't be ridiculous. We can save our marriage. It's too late. But Jesus can save our marriage. Oh, you mean your friend over there? Yes. He knows we're headed for divorce. Does he? That puts him one up on you. Hey, did you eat all the bread? Oh, sorry, I was hungry. Hey, can we get some more bread over here? There's plenty of bread there. No, there isn't. It's empty. How did you do that? I'm Jesus. Um, will you come with me, please? Sure. Well, as long as you're going to perform miracles, why don't you turn my water into wine? Am I losing my mind? That bread basket was empty. Wasn't it? I thought it was. 
And then suddenly it wasn't empty. Doesn't that freak you out? You haven't been some of the places I've been. Plus, it was your idea to come here. I suppose. I suppose it really is him. Jesus? Yeah. Please. Well, how did he know that stuff about my boyfriend? He probably just overheard us talking. No. We didn't talk about that in there. Look, I don't know what the explanation is, but I'm sure there is one. It's not so bad here. There's free food and a warm place. So you can leave, but I'm staying. You shall see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Your good book forgot to mention there'd be a chance of scattered showers. I'm glad to see that you remember some of what you read in the Bible, Nick. Especially that part. That's like one of my favorite parts. You can thank Gideon's for that. There's no telling what a man will do at 3 a.m. in a day's end outside of Fargo. You were searching, Nick. I was bored. Bored people turn on the TV. You opened the Bible. What were you looking for? You tell me. You know everything. It was after the death of your father. You were wondering how your parents could be so content with so little. How your father could be as proud of his fruit stand as you are of your fame and your millions. I loved your parents. Real, authentic, hard-working people. More people went to your father's fruit stand for his smile than for his fruit. And you know who was great? Your grandmother, Sadie. I never knew her. She died when I was little. Of course you remember her. In fact, you could say that she's the reason we're here like this tonight. What do you mean? Your grandmother was a delight to my heart. A, a humble woman filled with love and zeal, real prayer warrior. In her last years, her most passionate prayers, Nick, were for you. She was praying that you would come to me as your Lord and Savior, that you'd come to eternal life. I'm honoring her faithfulness by coming to you and making this personal appeal. Well, there's no need to go to all the trouble, Jesus, because I'm doing just fine on my own. If I hadn't intervened tonight, you'd be dead. You'd all be dead. What? The flooding left the road unstable. Nick would have hit the curve too hard. And each of you would have followed him. No, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You're trying to take credit for saving our lives by keeping us off the road. But if you are indeed God, then you created the storm that caused the damage on the road. So if we kept driving, you'd be responsible for our deaths. You live in a fractured creation. That's what's responsible for the storm. I stepped in and took advantage of the storm to bring you all here tonight so that I could make this personal appeal. Okay, Jesus. If you really are the Christ, why don't you tell me something amazing about myself? Something that only I'd know. You don't really want to leave your husband. Wrong. Our marriage is over. No. You're only looking for something he can't provide, and you're not going to find it on your own, either. I'll take that chance. Catherine, don't be so hard on your husband. You've got to expect him to believe in me. He's been listening to my voice since he was 15. In fact, you heard it earlier today. I did? Yes. I was that still, small voice in your head that told you to pick Kayla. But you didn't, did you? I wanted to. But... But Catherine wouldn't let you. Am I right? I'm not ashamed to admit it. For all I know, she was gonna kill us. Well, if that's the way you feel, I probably should have. 
Do you see what I mean? I can't fault you, Catherine. But I can't fault you, Hank. Why? She's here, isn't she? Of course. I knew you wouldn't pick her up, so I asked another one of my servants to do it. Didn't I? Pick her up. That was you? That's not the first time you heard my voice, nor will it be the last. You just keep listening, and I guarantee you'll find what you seek. Hank, do you really think that you're going to save, let alone restore your marriage, by putting your wife's wishes above mine? She wants to break up your marriage, Hank. I want to save it. You've got to be listening to me. You know, maybe the two of you should get married and just leave me out of it. Catherine, you've been out of it for way too long. It's time that you and I met. Are you saying I'm not a Christian? I'm sorry, you're not. How dare you? I go to church every Sunday. I even teach Sunday school. I know. The sad part is that you would have peace in your heart today if you had half the faith of some of those kids in your class. Catherine. She's only going to the ladies' room, man. So, oh, Jesus, if you're everywhere, aren't you in the ladies' room as well? Nick, you've got quite a sense of humor, but eventually you're going to find out that you can't make a joke about everything. You're awfully quiet down here. I haven't had much to say. I've given you a lot to think about, haven't I? Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm sorry for being rude earlier. Everything is such a mess. Hank and I are drifting apart for months now. I don't even know who I am anymore. Why am I telling you this? Sometimes it's just easier to talk to a stranger about these things, you know? And that, that man out there, that man who thinks he's Jesus, he thinks he knows me, do you think he's Jesus? To you? Well, is it true? I mean, that you don't want to leave your husband? I don't know what I want. I just, I want things to be different. Well, then does it matter if he really is Jesus? I mean, he obviously knows a lot about you. Why don't you just listen to what he has to say? Like he can fix what's wrong with my marriage. Like you can? Thank you for picking up Kayla. No, it's no problem. I feel terrible about that. Hank, uh, you seem to be really buying this whole Jesus thing. I'm a believer, yes. But do you believe in that guy? He either is who he says he is, or... Or what? Or he's a lunatic. And I've seen no evidence of him being crazy. Hank, 
You don't get out to the big city too much, do you, pal? So tell me, Hank, what do you do for a living? I'm a head accounts receivable for a home improvement company. What do you pull down there? 90? Come on, you're among friends, and besides, he already knows. <laughs> Less than that. Doesn't seem like God's been too particularly generous to you. You know, there's more to life than money. There's family, too. And he hasn't done you any favors in that department, either. You know, that's not nice. Am I lying? Am I? I mean, if that's your way of rewarding the faithful, I'm glad I went out and got what I got on my own. You wouldn't have anything if I hadn't put a stone in your path. July 4th, 1974, Elder Quinn Quarry. You and your buddies were racing up the hill to dive in. You took a shortcut through the bushes, and you hit your foot on a stone just before you dove. Yeah, yeah. It threw my footing off. It ruined my dive. It caused me to hit an underwater rock that broke my hand in two places. I could have been a receiver. If you hadn't tripped over that stone, Nick, you would have hit your head on that rock. You would have died at 14 years old. But your grandmother's prayers were ringing in my ear. I put that stone in your path. But if you really are God, you could have figured out a way to save him without breaking his hand. True. But Kayla, if nothing had happened, he wouldn't have remembered it, and he clearly does. And if he believed in me, he would see it for what it truly is. My grace. So you hurt him so he'd thank you later? In a way. Kayla, you've got to remember, I'm not the one that put him on that path. I'm not the one who made him dive. I'm the one who saved him, just like I saved you two days ago in L.A. before you left. You remember, Kayla? What? What happened? Nothing. You know, I, I don't know what you did to that poor girl, but if you really are God, the least you could do is take care of my friend Hank here. At least he believes in you. Hank's going through a rough spot right now, Nick. But the difference between you and him is that he knows in the deep of his heart that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called to his purposes. So I guess when that drunk driver killed my father, that was your way of patting him on the back. Nick, your father enjoyed his life. But he's enjoying his eternal life a whole lot more right now. And I want you to see him. Well, excuse me if I don't take you up on that offer. But many do, don't they? How many people are going to blow themselves up in your name today in the Middle East? In my name, none. What about the people that blow up abortion clinics? I've never once asked anyone to blow up an abortion clinic. But you do remember telling the Israelites to kill the Canaanites before they entered the Promised Land. Men, women, and children, even the livestock. Today we have a word for that, genocide. For a non-believer, you know your Bible very well, Nick. Answer the question. Perfect time. No, 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 I'm not gonna let him off that easy. I want an answer. Yes, I asked the Israelites to kill the Canaanites. Women and children included? Yes. Is that any way for God of love to behave? I am love, but I'm also holy, and I cannot allow sin to go unpunished, and that's not just for my sake, it's for yours. I don't want you to wallow in sin and, and rebellion and guilt. I want you to thrive in unending peace and joy. There isn't one human being on this planet that's an accident. I hand-formed you in your mother's womb. And I formed you for purpose. I put before you a path of, of, of love and worship. And the degree with which you'll experience love and joy and the good things of life is the degree to which you'll bend to my will. And if we don't seek your will, you kill us like you did the Canaanites. Everyone dies, Nick. But not everyone needs to fear death. If you abide in me, you'll be stepping free from this fallen world and into glory. Is that what heaven's like? Glory? It's more than glory, Melissa. It's, it's, it's peace and love and joy. Can you imagine living in the fullness of the warmth of God's light? 
There are no words in the human vocabulary that can describe it. It's, it's a place where there is no suffering. It's a place where every tear is wiped from your eyes. There's no sadness, there's no pain. And you know, Melissa, one day you and I will walk on the streets of gold and we'll talk about this night together. What about me, Jesus? Will I walk the streets of gold? Nick, that's completely up to you. Melissa made her decision on the 232nd day of her 17th year. That was her birthday into my kingdom. Why don't you tell Nick all about it? Tell him why you saw me. I'd like to hear it. So would I. Well, I was, uh, depressed. The guy that I'd been dating uh, broke up with me, so I, uh, it was all I could do. So I would uh, come home and just sleep and cry and sleep and cry and eat. It got so bad that I was um, thinking about taking my own life. I. Uh, stole a bottle of painkillers from my mom's house and was planning on taking them that night and going to bed and never waking up. <sighs> and um, the phone rang. For whatever reason, I picked it up. <laughs> and it was a friend from work. And uh, she was a Christian. And she would always talk about God and the Bible. <sighs> and she said she was going to come pick me up and take me to a movie. And I, I thought, why not? So, uh, half an hour later, I was sitting in a movie theater, and it was packed. It turned out it was like a Christian film festival. And this movie was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was as if the message was directed at me, and I remember tearing up. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't help myself. At the end of the movie, a man went up to the front and began to speak, and it felt like he was talking to me, you know, personally. He talked about God's forgiveness, eternal life, and how this place we call planet Earth was only temporary and that how our real home was in the kingdom of heaven. And that I would live there eternally if I would surrender my life to him. You know, I, I can't quite explain it, but something was happening to me right then, right there in a theater. He then said, whoever would like to commit their lives to Christ, to get out of their seats and go to the front. And the most important decision you ever make in your whole life stands before you right now. And so I did. I felt like a, a whole new person that very second. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Did you find that rest? Yes. Looking back, I can't believe I was, you know, gonna take my life over some guy that had broken up with me. <laughs> Melissa, I have so much more in store for you, too. If you trust me. There'll be times when I ask you to do things you may not want to do. Yeah. I don't understand. You can't marry Paul. But I love him. Well, I shouldn't say you can't, because you can. But you shouldn't. It's just not my desire for you, Melissa. But I love him. Melissa, you have a very tender heart. How many guys have you fallen in love with since you were 16? 
But he loves me, too. Melissa, it's just not my will for a couple to be unequally matched. Paul doesn't believe in me. What if we got married and I made it my mission to save him? I could do that. Melissa, do you love him? Do you really love him? Yes, I do. Who do you think loves him more, you or me? You do, obviously, but... Melissa, Paul doesn't feel about you the same way you feel about him. He hates his assignment up in Winnemucca. He's lonely. Right now, he thinks that you're exactly what he needs. But two years from now, when you're back in L.A., he's going to want something more, something you can't give him. He's going to grow to resent you. And you know what he's going to resent most about you? Your faith in me. That will still be the biggest difference between the two of you. So instead of being the, the instrument that draws him to me, you'll actually cause him to turn the other way. Oh, Melissa, isn't it more important that he loves me than loves you? Will he believe in you? In time, yeah, he will. Well, then, maybe then we could... Melissa, I promise you, by then you won't even want to entertain the possibility. Remember, I have many wonderful things in store for you. This is beginning to sound like deal or no deal. And if I were you, I'd say no deal. You know, Nick, your cynicism is beginning to wear on all of us. That's awfully presumptuous of you to speak for everyone. It's starting to get on my nerves as well. I was against you the minute you tried to run me over. Well, hey, I tried to leave, remember? It's not my fault the car wouldn't start. Nick, you're here for one reason. Because it's not my will that anyone should perish, but that everyone would turn around and come to me. The word you remember from your Bible is repent. I don't have anything to repent of. As I said, Nick, I'm here honoring the prayers of your grandmother. I wish I had known her. You still have that chance. But only on your terms. Sounds like blackmail to me. It's not blackmail, Nick. I want you to be where your grandmother is. It's a place of everlasting love. And suppose I don't want that. I'm a gentleman, Nick. I'll never force myself on you or anyone. Ha! Ah, that's the worst kind of blackmail. Do things my way or face fire and brimstone forever. Nick, you don't want to follow me, do you? Not particularly. And you certainly don't want to obey me. Correct again. Nick, what would be more unjust and unfair for me to steal you at the moment of your death and force you to live in my presence and in my will for all eternity. Hell, on the other hand, is a place, Nick, where you'll be completely free from all of my thou shalt nots forever. Hell never sounded so appealing to me. You know, every day I get millions of complaints about this world, all the greed and selfishness, the poverty and the starvation, the wars, the murders, the abuse of children. I hardly recognize this place anymore. It bears so little resemblance to the garden that I created for you. But it's not hell, Nick. Even now, there's sunshine on a spring day. There's starry night and desert sky. There's a gentle breeze on a summer afternoon and the, the smell of flowers and the song of birds. And Not to mention the horrible storms and floods. And there's even people who are willing to lend a helping hand to the helpless. 
And there's love. Nick, there's still love. How could we forget love? Nick, there's one thing for sure. There's no love in hell. There's no beauty. No hope. There's just torment. The kind of torment that comes from within. But surely no one would choose that if they really believed you existed. Not so. Nobody goes into hell blindfolded. In one way or another, I've revealed myself to everyone. But if they could just see you... Not even that would be enough. Look at Satan. He stood before me in the very throne room of God. But he thought the... The beauty and the power bestowed was somehow earned. Gave himself over to pride. Scratch any sin and just below the surface you'll find pride. People steal because they think they deserve what other people have worked hard for. They, they hop from bed to bed because they feel entitled to just satisfy themselves no matter who it hurts, no matter what pain that it costs. Go. Can I get you anything else? No, I'm great, thanks. Enjoy your meals. It's the best burger I've ever tasted. Guess I should take my coupons back. I have to give you credit. This is the best salad I've ever tasted. I'll give you a bite of my salad if you let me have a bite of your burger. This is the first salad I ever wanted to taste. <laughs> there you go. Sirloin tips smothered in gravy on a bed of mashed potatoes with a green salad on the side, and Thousand Island dressing. Thank you. Aren't you going to eat? No, my uh, food is to serve my father. It, it tastes just like my mom's. Kayla, would you like to join us, or do you want me to serve you over there? I promise not to mention that L.A. thing again, unless you want to talk about it. Wow, this is great. Is it? It's not too hot or mild. It's... Perfect? Yeah. Thanks. I get that a lot. On second thought, I'm not hungry. Nick, I guarantee you this is the best deal you'll ever get. 
And it's absolutely free. You don't have to do anything but accept it. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm liable to end up brainwashed like the rest of these people. You wasted your time. No, it's not wasted. The meal he rejected will become food for others. Well, if he doesn't want it, can I have it? Absolutely. Kayla, I am willing to give you many good things. All you have to do is ask me. I have asked. Have I answered? Do you have any idea how we lived? One week, we'd be at my grandmother's, and then the next, we'd be in a shelter. And the week after, we'd be in child services. Or a foster home. And then my mom would get us back, promising us that it'd be different this time. But it never was. She's a junkie. Junkies never change. Your mother loves you. Yeah, when she was drunk and crying. About how she could have been this or that. She could have been. What about me? What chance did I ever have with a mother like her? Do you think she cared if I brushed my teeth or if I combed my hair? Or if I was hungry? Or even if I went to school? She never even let me leave her side when I was little. And cute. She'd get twice the handouts. But when I got just as dirty as her, People looked away. The way you did. I never turned away. So you were watching when I'd have to flag down a police officer after my mom OD'd? Or how about the time the guy robbed us and he cut me instead? I'm glad you were watching. Hope we put on a pretty good show for you. I used to pray when I was little. Pastor Jim down at the mission taught me how. He's a good man. Yeah. At least he cared. What did you do for us? I took all of these hard things, Kayla. And I use them to turn you into the wonderful young lady that you are. So strong and enduring. Such a wonderful role model for your little sister. But right now she's with him. Him? My stepfather, Jake. Funny thing is, at first I thought he was an answered prayer. He had a house and a job. And it finally looked like we were going to have a normal home life. But when he got to drinking, my mother and him got to fighting. It was worse than the streets. And then she'd lock him out of the bedroom. And he'd look for a new place to sleep and not just to sleep. Where were you then? I was shouting into his mind and his conscience to stop and stop. I was there in the bathroom. Kayla, your prayer before you pulled that trigger. It wasn't for death. It was to go to a better place. 
Kayla, if you had died that night, you, you wouldn't have gone to a better place. So the night before, I caused your stepfather to stumble. That made him reconsider the prospect of keeping a loaded gun in his pocket. So he removed the clip and unknowingly saved your life. It's not the first time I saved your life. And it won't be the last, either. Kayla. What do you want? I just want to stop hurting. I can't promise you that all your problems will disappear overnight. You have a hard road ahead of you. But I can tell you that you'll have a peace and a purpose that will not only survive, but it will thrive and grow, if you trust me. Will you follow me? Yes. Will you forgive all those people who hurt you? Even as I forgive you? Yes. Even Jake? How can you ask me to do that? You saw what he did to me. Kayla, look what he's done to me. I paid a heavy price for your stepfather's sins. It's the same price I paid for your sins. Now, Kayla, I want you to go back to Los Angeles. And I want you to tell the police what your stepfather did. I want him to go to jail. He needs to understand that there's a price that has to be paid for sin, even in this fallen world. But Kayla, I don't want him to go to hell. I want him to come to me so I can forgive him, so I can give him new life. And you know, there's another reason that I want you to forgive him. If you don't, all the anger and resentment will just Poison every relationship you have, even ours. If you want to love, you have to abandon hate. Don't let anger steal your joy. I forgive him. And I forgive you. advantage of an emotionally distraught little girl. Mick, why are you fighting me? What have I done to make you hate me? Hate you? You think I've given you enough thought to hate you? I hate federal regulators. I hate taxes. I hate sitting in coach. You don't warrant hate. You warrant exactly what I've been giving you all this time. Indifference. I don't want you. I don't need you. I'm not like these losers. You don't need anything else in your life, Nick? I'm living the American dream. 11 years in the NFL, nine Pro Bowls, two Super Bowl rings, a sack record that no one's come close to touching yet. A restaurant chain that I'll take public in a couple of years for hundreds of millions of dollars. I've got everything I want. 
What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It's not love of money that keeps him away from me, Melissa. Thank you. It's pride. Here we go with pride again. Give pride a break. You show me someone without pride, and I'll show you a bum. Someone who's taking more from society than what he's giving. So that's what motivates you, giving? No. But when I succeed, other people do too. When I sack the quarterback, I help my whole team. And look at my restaurants. Each one of them employs 25 to 40 people. That doesn't include my vendors, doesn't include corporate, doesn't include my suppliers. Every one of those families is doing better than mine did when I was growing up. Funny how it always comes back to your dad's fruit stand, Nick. Did you not feel loved as a child? Of course I felt loved. Did you feel secure? I felt secure. Then why do you have so much disdain for your youth, Nick? Why were you so embarrassed? I wasn't embarrassed. Nick. Nick, I'm gonna call you on that one. As a child, you were happy. You spent all your summers working with your father at the fruit stand, listening to his stories, marveling at the way people came just to talk to him. Everybody liked your father. You have to admit you got your work ethic from him, Nick. I got a lot of things from him. But not what he wanted you to have the most. When you were a child, everybody was pretty much the same. Working class, lower middle class. Nobody was rich or unduly privileged. But when you got into high school, suddenly you were with the sons of doctors and lawyers and businessmen, people that the rest of the world thought were very successful. And it all comes down to the summer before your sophomore year. You're working the fruit stand like you always did. And Cliff and Bobby came. And they saw you in your white apron and they thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And your dad's accent. You used to have an accent, Nick. You got rid of it, didn't you? You think you're so smart. But you had football. The coach didn't care whether you were rich or poor. All he cared about was your performance on the field. And you excelled. Sports was your ticket. And suddenly you were no longer little Nicky Crescetti in a white apron, the son of the fruit vendor. You were Crusher Crescetti. And God help the man who would laugh at you. Really want to mess with me? Relax, Nick. Have a piece of pie. your grandmother's recipe. I'll give her this. She was a great cook. That's because she sprinkled a generous helping of love on everything, didn't she, Nick? I don't remember her. A memory is a funny thing, Nick. It can remain perfectly hidden for years, even decades, and then come flooding back because of a, of a picture or hearing a song, smelling a scent or even a taste. graduated from high school. She was never rich. She never even learned to drive a car. But your grandmother, Nick, was a very special lady. Your 
remember her, don't you? Your grandmother had true faith in my ability to intervene and fulfill my promises. And I promised her that I would move heaven and earth to reach you. So here I am, Nick. You put this ancient memory in my head. And you expect me to throw away the life that I built for myself? What kind of weak-willed man do you think I am? The kind of man who hasn't opened himself up to unconditional love since he was a child. You put up a wall. You turned your back on the old-fashioned blue-collar values. Blasted off to your future. But with Sadie, Ah, uh, there was never a wall between you and Sadie. She died before you could shut down completely. And so there's still just a fragment, Nick, of unconditional love that remains in your heart. Nick, when is the last time that you told your parents that you loved them? I took care of them. I bought them a house. I bought them cars. This is ridiculous. I'm not gonna sit here and let you make me feel guilty for something I didn't do. Nick, some people feel guilty for things that they did, and others feel guilty for what they didn't do. The question is, what are you gonna do about it? I don't have to do anything about it. Well, yes, you do, Nick. This is your time. All the seemingly random moments and incidents of your life, they've all come together to bring you here and now to this point of making a decision for your life for all eternity. Kayla stepped out of death and into life. I want you to join her. I want you to join your mom and dad. I want you to join Sadie. Sadie awaits you in heaven. Nick, what are you afraid of? Do you think I'm gonna ask you to give all your money away to the poor and become a, a missionary in Africa? Or are you more afraid that I'm gonna ask you to proclaim my name to your friends and colleagues? Is that what it is, Nick? You're afraid your, your business partners and your former teammates will laugh at you because of this? They'll say you're weak, I'll say you've lost your edge and you've gone soft. Is that it, Nick? You think I care what they think? You think I care what anybody thinks? I'm my own man. You think you're a self-made man, but you're not. I made you, Nick. You existed in my heart before the creation of the world. I have plans for your life. Think of what you can accomplish with me in your corner. Nick, please, open your heart. I'm doing just fine on my own. Well, well, well. You are still in business. And after all these years, you'd think nobody'd be interested in what you're selling. I don't sell anything. Oh, that's right. You give it all away. Any takers? Not me. He couldn't get me to bite. <laughs> That's a smart man. I come bearing good news. The road is finally clear and you're all free to leave. Well, hallelujah. That's the best news I've heard all day. It isn't true. The road isn't clear. Like you would know? This man's been out there. He obviously knows. Does he? Apparently, I do. You coming? Don't, Nick. Nick, I don't think you should go. Can I get an escort? Absolutely. Just follow me. It's you and me, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's one for me. Force set free. Don't worry, Jesus. We'll meet again.
That was his last chance. But there's a downside to being God. It's... It's knowing. I reach out to him with everything I am, but... But I know. I just know. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I am the Good Shepherd. And I know my own. And my own know me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. Melissa? Yes? Will you do me a favor? Drive Caleb back to Los Angeles. Bring your child protection services for me. Yes, of course. Kayla, you're gonna have some hard times ahead of you. And you'll have some doubts. This will ultimately be the first step towards saving your family. Really? Yeah. And you have such a wonderful life ahead of you. Will I ever see you again? Yeah, yeah, but not like this. I mean, not for a long while, anyway. Can I talk to you? Mm, all the time. And I'll be listening. Will I hear you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my word, mostly. That's the Bible. That book has all the wisdom you need for your life. And then sometimes, just in the quiet of your spirit, you'll hear me say, this is the way you should go, this is the way you shouldn't go. Melissa. Paul's gonna be very upset. You're gonna have to be very strong, okay? Okay. What about us, Laura? Hank, I want you to love your wife. I want you to... Pray for her and pray like you never stop praying. Where you have followed, you will now lead. Many will be blessed because of your faith. I think I understand. Catherine, won't you join us? No, I don't mean just here and now, I mean forever. If you really were who you say you are, you'd know that I already answered the call. Yeah, I remember when you walked up the aisle, but Catherine, there's a lot more to it than just walking up an aisle or saying a few words. You have to really, truly repent, change of heart. If you don't believe me, believe your handsome husband there. He's a good man, and he loves you very much. Of course, not as much as I do. I love you. And I love you. I love you. Thank you. 
Sorry for the inconvenience, folks. Is the road still closed? Uh, no, sir. The road's open, but uh, there's been a terrible accident. An accident? Yes, sir. Uh, the driver was uh, caught in the fog and uh, smashed into the guardrail around the curb. What kind of car was it? Was it a BMW? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, it was. Oh. And the driver, did he make it? Uh, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. He was killed instantly. Did you know him? No. Not really. We were all having dinner back together at the diner. Uh, which one? The one in Thompsonville? No, um, the one a couple miles back. I'm sorry to contradict you, ma'am, but there's no diner a couple miles back. N no, there was. We were just there. Uh, I've been patrolling this county for more than 10 years, and I can assure you there's no diner on this road. But what about Officer DeVille? He walked in the diner himself. Officer who? DeVille. D-E-V-I-L. L-E. I haven't heard of anybody working around here named DeVille. Uh, if you folks will excuse me. I'm not going crazy, right? There was a diner. This has been... Quite a day. Got that right. Yeah. I guess we better get going. Be careful. We'll be just fine. We're in good hands. Come on. Please forgive me. I'm not a bad person. I'm just confused. It's okay. We all get like that sometimes. So, shall we? Yeah, but first, let's go back. Go back? Where? This is it. Yeah, this is the cut of the parking lot. Over there was the foundation. No. No, this is the wrong place. It must be further back. No, this is right. This, this is it. You have to really, truly repent, change of heart. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is it. It was true. It, it was all true, and it really was him. You knew it was him. How did you know? How can you save my marriage? All you have to do is ask me. Save my marriage. Save my marriage, please, Lord. Just, just save my marriage. I didn't at first, but it was something in my heart that told me it was. Nothing in my heart told me. <laughs> and 
Not until he said he loved me. I love you. Then I felt something. We've all sinned and fallen short of his glory. But you know it's all about his grace and sacrifice on the cross. I don't know what to say. Just imagine he's right there. Because he is. Talk to him. Tell him what you feel and tell him what's in your heart. Catherine, won't you join us? No, I don't mean just here and now. I mean forever. Good afternoon, sir. What will it be today? Menu or special order? <laughs> <laughs> 